Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and in this rather fun video we are going to be showing you how you can perform some base training, circuit training in the Airbus 32NX. What this is, is essentially a series of touch and goes that new flight cadets have to undertake before they can become type rated on the Airbus. The trainers would watch them perform six takeoffs and landings and ultimately, if everything is good, they'd get signed off at the end of it. Normally, what companies do is they take a host of cadets out for the day somewhere to go and perform this, uh, this training and it's a day that cadets never forget. This is as close as you will get to flying a VFR in a 45 ton Airbus. And just, I guess, kind of having uh, a little bit of fun, albeit very serious fun, uh, but yeah, fun just taking off and landing as many times as you want here in the simulator. Obviously, real world, six takeoff and landings, but in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you're free to fly and do this as many times as you wish. You can also choose any airport you wish, but I will speak a little bit more about that at the end of the video. There is a lot of information to take in though on this uh, video and everything happens really rather fast. So if you need to, obviously pause the video and make sure you've got a pen and paper to hand as well if you want to take notes, write things down, the order in which things are done and then you can come in and have fun in the simulator yourself. So here we are on the ground at Nîmes in France. The ICAO code is Lima Fox Tango Whiskey, and this is actually an airport that uh, EasyJet have used in the past for base training. So I thought we'd quite keep it, uh, try and keep it a little bit realistic. We've also got live weather on as well. I've just noticed as I'm t speaking to you, there's uh, a rainbow coming to view, which is uh, which is rather nice. But we might have some weather as we're coming in. Of course, you don't have to do this in live weather, and uh, you can set whatever weather you want. Clear weather is a great way to start and then you can also use this technique to practice crosswinds and and things like that but let's go ahead and look at setting up how we are going to do this base training so first thing i'm going to do is quickly bring up the chart we are on runway 36 the first thing i want to know is how high the airfield elevation is we're going to conduct the circuit at 1500 feet above ground level which is uh, usually the, the normal altitude you'd fly this at uh, so we can see that airport elevation is 309 feet so plus 1500 we're going to be flying this at around 1800 feet and i've already got that selected there on the FCU. Whilst I remember, I'm also going to go ahead and turn off all of the terrain uh, systems and G basically the uh, ground proximity warning system. I'm going to turn all those off just because otherwise you can get various alarms coming uh, because this isn't a standard way that you'd normally fly the aircraft. So we don't want to uh, we don't want to be uh, alarmed by uh, any noises that we're not expecting to hear. Let's go down then and set up the uh, the McDo information. So, first thing uh, I'm going to check is normally you'd still check that uh, all your IRS is aligned. Of course, I've spawned here right in on the runway, so everything should be up and running and absolutely fine. Let's go to our init page then. So, all we're going to do is type in a destination arrival, which of course is exactly the same today. So, Lima Fox Tango Whiskey. Pop that in, give it a second and return, just clear the scratch pad out. Flight number today really doesn't matter. Alternate, again not required, that flight number is in use. Let's pop another one in shall we? There we go. Cost index, you can keep that nice and low, so I don't know, cost index of two. Uh, cruise flight level, again, this really doesn't matter, we're not going to be getting up to a cruise flight level today. So if we popped in uh, 5,000, then we could go ahead and, uh, and enter that. Again, we're not going to concern ourselves with the tropo. On to the flight plan then. Very simple, we are going to depart from runway 36. Uh, no SID, so we can just select none for that and insert. So 
that's now just a straight out departure with nothing else shown and then what you would be able to do uh, in the real aircraft although I'm not sure you can do it here is you should be able to then select the arrival um, runway 36 now there's no ILS here um, but for some reason you can't select a uh, runway 36 arrival uh, on its own you would either in the in the sim have to set an RNAV or NDB approach I don't want any of uh, those so I'm just gonna leave that um, I'm just gonna leave that blank and that doesn't matter because we're not essentially going to be following a flight plan we're never going to be in navigation mode we're going to do the entire thing uh, manually flying autopilot is uh, is not going to be used uh, I can of course if I wish just clear that discontinuity there we go so don't worry too much about being off track and things like that again there is no flight plan to uh, to speak of I am however then going to go to uh, the fixes page which is done by selecting the flight plan and then the line side key number one um, fix info and then I'm going to put in the threshold of the runway that we are going to be landing on which in this instance is Lima Fox Tango Whiskey runway 36 okay so the reason I have done that is because I now want to put the threshold at a 90 degree angle here on my navigation display and I'll explain what I mean so as we're going to fly the uh, the circuit uh, we're going to take off runway 36 and then we're going to come back around and then when we when we're a beam the threshold so here just uh, a beam the threshold runway 36 there's two ways that we can obviously work out that we are a beam the threshold number one would be look out the window uh, and number two is we could have a radial emitted from the threshold of runway 36 which I can then see on the navigation display so as I cross it I know that we are nicely beam the uh, nicely beam the threshold so in this example that is actually really easy to work out as the runway we're departing on is runway 36 we're just going to take 90 off of that which gives us a radial of 270 let's pop that in and now we can see there is the uh, the threshold a beam line whatever you want to call it just so we know where we are in respects to the runway of course it's much easier in the real world uh, oh look at that weather it's much easier in the real world just to look out of the window and perhaps if you're doing this in uh, VR then again it's easy just to look out the window of course when you're flying on a 2d screen there are some limitations particularly as we are going to be hand flying so we're going to want to spend a little bit of time looking at the instruments to make sure that we're at the right altitude and things so just anything we can do to help us um, that's uh, that's what I've just uh, put that in uh, in there for. Let's continue setting up the uh, the box, and then I'll explain a little bit about how we're going to actually fly the uh, fly the circuit. So obviously, don't need to pop anything in the radnav page. Let's go to our performance page. So transition altitude, I'm not actually sure, but again, for this, it doesn't really matter. Uh, thrust reduction and acceleration is still 1,000 feet above ground level. Um, which at 1300 then makes sense. We've already spoke about how the airfield elevation is 300 feet. We're going to be doing flaps one, toga takeoff, and then we'll let the uh, sim calculate the V speeds. Now these look like really low V speeds, and there's a reason for that um, because when this is actually done uh, in the real world, well, you haven't got 170 passengers sat behind you. There's usually a few pilots all together doing uh, doing their final base training, um, so you don't usually have a very heavy aircraft and we've only got a little bit of fuel on board as well three and a half tons which is plenty for this uh, for this tutorial so just to keep it realistic I've only added very low payload we <coughs> payload weights to the uh, to the aircraft and obviously just a little bit of fuel now what's important here is we're going to fly the whole thing uh, certainly all the takeoff and the first turn etc we're going to fly everything no faster than S speed because we're going to have flaps one out at least flaps one out for the entire time so let's just make a note of our S speed which is one 
0.62. We're going to go ahead and pop that. Uh, we can go ahead and pop that on here. At the moment, we're in nav, uh, in managed speed. That's fine, of course, for uh, for takeoff. But we need to make a note of 162. So I've got a little piece of paper in front of me and a quick note so that I know that that's going to be the speed we're aiming for. All right, let's now actually talk about in a bit of detail what we're going to do after we've departed. A lot happens, so we're going to take it nice and slow. I'll explain it, but then when you see me actually fly it, everything should hopefully become a little clearer. So we're going to take off just as you would do any other takeoff, and that is part of the base training that uh, new cadets have to go through. Trainers are actually looking for six successful landings, but they're also looking for six successful takeoffs. So with the takeoff, you don't do anything different that you would do on a normal takeoff. So we're going to take off. We're going to pitch up to between 15 and 17 degrees. We are then, once we've got the positive rate, we're going to get the gear up. Once we've done that, we're going to go to the FCU and we're going to pull selected speed. And we're going to select that S speed, 162. We're then going to level off at 1,800 feet, as we've already discussed. And then, as we've done that, we're then going to turn the flight directors off, because we won't need those on. We're not going to be following them. Once we've got the flight directors off, we're going to go into track FPA mode. After we've done that, we're going to activate the approach phase of the uh, flight, which I can't show you just down here yet because we haven't even taken off, but you'll see me do that in uh, in a few minutes as we get airborne. And then once we've activated the approach phase, we're going to push this back into managed speed. Once all that is done, then we're going to make our turn to fly downwind. Obviously, we're uh, going to be taking off. Runway heading is uh, 360. Uh, we're going to be then flying in the opposite direction. Just going to check that, actually. It might not be 360 exactly. No, it's 355. So, obviously, we're going to be flying on a heading of 170 in the opposite direction. So feel free to stop the video at this point if you wish and go back just to recap everything that we're going to do again. There is a lot happening and of course in the real world you would have two pilots. You obviously have yourself, the pilot flying in this case, and then the pilot monitoring would be helping you with doing lots of different things, setting the uh, track for turning back around uh, for the uh, downwind leg for example. And of course he can assist in, uh, in other things too because we've got a lot that's going to take place right as we start rolling down the runway. So let's clear that out and we shall do our takeoff. Okay, so with everything now set, we are about ready to go. You may have noticed that sadly I did have to do away with the live weather. There were rain clouds coming over and visibility reduced, which made uh, this particular example of a base training flight um, rather impossible. So we've just gone with some uh, bulk standard weather. It also means that the winds are nice and light as uh, as well. Uh, right. Let's uh, let's get ready to go. So we are going to do our normal takeoff. However, because we are so light, remember, it's not going to take us very long at all to get up to uh, those relatively low V speeds. <coughs> so release the parking brake and we'll set 50%. Slight issue with the thrust levers there. Let's just try that again. That's my hardware configuration. That's better. Set 50% N1. Engine stable. Set takeoff thrust. Man toga. SRS. And we can see that speed shooting up. V1. Rotate. Gear is up, we'll pull S speed and reduce the climb thrust. Lower the nose now. Try not to overshoot our uh, target altitude 
too much. If you do, it's not a great problem. We can always get back down there. There we are. So let's just start to level off. All happens much faster than a normal takeoff when you're very light. Flight directors can come off. Set track FPA. We'll activate the approach phase. We can then go into manage speed. Let's roll this around to our downwind heading, which is going to be 175. There we go. And now let's make that turn. No more than 20 degrees bank, or 25 degrees bank, rather, when we're in uh, track FBA mode. The fact that it is fly-by-wire technology as well means that the Airbus is an absolute dream to fly. You just point and shoot, essentially. We can also fly this in um, the nav mode, just because this way you've got the runway visual on your navigation display all the way, all the way through. So, just dropped slightly below there, our target altitude. It does take a little bit of getting used to, hand flying, a good skill to master, and once you've done three or four of these takeoff and landings, it will become much, much easier. So here you can see 175 coming around now. Let's just start to level the wings. There we go. Okay, so what we're looking for next is when we get a beam the runway threshold, we're going to start the timer. We're going to do 45 seconds, a circuit of 1500 feet, 45 seconds from the uh, beam the runway threshold is normal. If you've got any wind, however, you'd need to take that into account. So if you'd got a tailwind, uh, for example, a five knot tailwind, then you would take five seconds off that. So you'd only do 40 seconds. The opposite is also true. If you've got a five knot headwind, then you'd want to fly it for 50 seconds. As it is at the moment, I've got very little wind today with the, the um, normal weather preset. So we're just going to continue to uh, fly 45 seconds from, uh, from that threshold. So once we are a beam, the threshold will start the chrono time 45 seconds and then we will make our base turn back in. Here it comes. We're a little bit close to the airport actually. We should uh, probably have been a tad further away. Slight overbank on, uh, on the departure. So we've started the chrono. Keep an eye on that altitude as well. Once we get to 45 seconds, then we shall start the turn, get the gear down, go flaps 2. And we can use our distance here on the navigation display. And we want to be about a thousand feet AGL above ground level at 3 miles. So that's going to be 1,300 feet here on our altitude. So there we go, that's 45. Let's get the gear down. Go flaps 2. And a descent rate normally of around 600 feet per minute is, uh, is a good figure to work with. Not too much. can just see the runway there. Once we're happy that we're going to be coming in, then let's go flaps 3, followed of course by flaps full. Always keep looking out the window if you can. I know it's difficult compared to real life when you can just obviously move your head. So 
so we're just coming round and of course the navigation display can really help you there we've rolled out not too bad there slight overshoot but nothing that we can't correct so now we're looking for the pappies that's 1000 call out at around three miles so that's pretty good let's get her on the center line perform the landing after touching down make sure we don't go reverse thrust or anything like that we're just going to touch down stand the thrust levers back up so there's a little bit of thrust there select flaps two once we're happy we've got flaps two selected then we're going to take off at the magenta triangle so I can now see two white two red let's concentrate on getting that center line back in 500 The ground speed of 122 gives us around 600 feet per minute. And the more you do this, the better you will get at it. It is a very, very short, very, very busy thing to do, particularly when you're on your own. So focusing now on the landing zone. 50, 40, 30, Retard the thrust. 20, Little flare. 10, five. Touch down. Thrust up slightly. Select flaps two. Flaps two selected and toga. And takeoff. Normal takeoff. Everything we would normally do. Yeah, the ground proximity warning just there so let's pull it up landing gear up thrust reduction is at a thousand feet AGL there's our thrust reduction let's pull the same speed as was before 163 we can start to level off flight directors have already been turned off for us that wouldn't normally happen when you go toga in the real aircraft then flight directors would automatically come back on okay we've climbed a little bit too high but again that's nothing we can't uh, rectify now as a bug with the aircraft you don't on the second time round need to activate the approach phase I'm just going to double check that no you don't need to activate the approach phase second time round that's all been done so we can go to manage speed and we will do exactly the same again okay so runway threshold is uh, coming up again straight out of our left window there it is start the chrono constantly trying to monitor that altitude as well remember without autopilot you are in control of everything pitch your role all down to you this is probably as close as you'll get to uh, general aviation flying in uh, in an airbus and I know that it's a day that all new cadets remember and enjoy how often do you get to play with a 45 ton aeroplane So, about five seconds, we'll begin that turn. There we go. Okay, so left turn, gear down, flaps two. And we'll go for hopefully another second successful landing and take off. So as you can see as well, we've set around 600 feet per minute. Speed's rolling back nicely. There's the runway. Flaps three. And you'll see as well, I've just reduce that rate of descent because I know I want to be 1300 feet about three miles away so I'm actually a little bit lower than I uh, need to be and that's okay 
constantly making these minor adjustments is what it's all about and the more you do it the better you'll get at it flaps full One thousand feet, and that's three point one miles, so that's looking good to me. Back on tracking that runway centre line and setting around six hundred feet per minute with that ground speed. biggest advice I can give when uh, practicing landings is yes do check the instruments particularly your VS rate because that will help but look out the window those pappies are a great indication try and keep that touchdown zone in a fixed place and below sort of 400 300, 300 feet the pappies aren't that reliable so 200 Go for the big white markers. 100. 50. 40. 30. 20. Little flare. 10. 5. Stand those thrust levers up. Flaps 2. And toga. Rotate. And we pitch up. Positive rate gear. Thrust position comes at 1,300 feet. There it is. Lower that nose. Flaps one. Set speed 162. We've gone through the altitude, but that's okay. And one of the things about the second or third time around, the flight directors don't come back on automatically, which they should do when going toga. That's a bug in the sim. You also don't need to reactivate the uh, approach phase. Occasionally, this will go into go around mode, in which case you will, but normally you won't have to. Once that's done, of course, then we can go back into manage speed. <coughs> We can set track again. The flight directors are already turned off. We can roll that round to oops. Roll that round to 175 again. And we can do this as many times as you wish. There we go, let's start that bank. And so guys, essentially that is it. That is how you can do your very own base training here in Microsoft's Flight Simulator. It's great fun, it's very intense, so don't be too uh, disheartened if it takes you three or four times, three or four goes around to sort of get into the swing of things. Uh, I certainly needed to when, uh, when making this video up. And of course there's little bugs that I spoke about during the stream, things like the flight director's not automatically coming back on, not having to reactivate the approach phase, second, third time round, etc. So there are some dissimilarities between the real life and the simulator, but to all intents and purposes, you can have some real fun and it is a great way of course to practice your landings pick your favorite airport i'd say make sure remember that your runway needs to be no shorter than around 2500 meters that gives you enough space to obviously land roll out and then take off again but with thousands of runways to choose from in the azobo world you can do this wherever you like just be sure of course that you aren't doing it in an area with some ridiculous terrain so try to do this at split dubrovnik tivat etc uh, they're pretty much no-go areas all you need to remember are the basics the circuit altitude is 15 100 feet above ground level so make sure you know the elevation of your airport and then of course you just need to work out what the runway heading is that way you know what your downwind heading will be and use the fixes page to set off that uh, 
angle at 90 degrees from the threshold. 90 degrees uh, to the left if you're making left hand traffic or of course 90 degrees to the right if you're making right hand traffic. Hope you found this video useful. If you have enjoyed this video then please do hit the like button on the stream. If you have any questions of course leave a comment down below and I'll come back to you. Let me know how you get on with your base training and even more importantly I'd be quite interested to know uh, if you are doing this where in the world you've decided to set this up and try it. Thanks very much for watching guys. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.